In this video, we're going to show you how to create music using samples inside your computer using FL. There are an infinite number of ways for you to be creative with samples, and this video will demonstrate just some of the techniques at your disposal. So feel free to experiment during this tutorial and beyond. Below this video, we've provided you with a link which you can use to download the samples or sounds that we'll be using in this video so that you can work along with this tutorial step by step. Please click on the link below to begin the download. On Windows, open your file explorer and go to your downloads folder. Once the download is complete, right click on the zipped folder and select extract all. Ensure that show extracted files when complete is checked and hit extract. On a Mac, open your Finder and go to the Downloads folder. Once the download is complete, please double click on the zipped folder to unzip it. We recommend moving this folder to your document so that you don't accidentally delete the samples if you clear out your Downloads folder. On Windows, I'm going to create a new folder and name it Samples and copy the Focusrite samples into that folder. That way, if you download samples in the future, you can just add them to this samples folder. On a Mac, I'm going to create a new folder and name it samples and copy the Focusrite samples into that folder. That way, if you download samples in the future, you can just add them to this samples folder. All of the samples in this pack were kindly provided by Amplify Sounds. You can find out more about Amplify and their range of iOS applications at amplifymusic.com. There are two types of samples that you'll find in this folder, loops and one-shots. Loops are pieces of music like a drum beat or a melody, and you can use these loops as building blocks when creating your tracks. We can quickly identify loops in this sample pack because they have the tempo information in the file name. For example, 105 BPM. On a PC, double click on a loop, like this drum loop, to listen to it. On a Mac, single click on one of the loops and press spacebar to preview the loop. One-shots, on the other hand, are individual sounds, like a single drum hit or a single bass hit, which you can use to build up your own patterns. As mentioned earlier, you can identify the loops quickly because they have tempo information in the file name, for example, 174 BPM. One-shots don't have this information. You may have noticed that these packs also contain a musical key in their folder name. To make things easy in these packs, all of the samples that contain pitch information, like bass lines, vocals, and melodies, are all in the same key. For example, in the jazzy electronic pack, all of the bass lines, vocals, and melodies are in C minor. In other sample packs that you'll find online, the individual samples will contain pitch information in the file name, because they'll likely be a mixture inside the pack. Earlier, we showed you how to set your Scala as the audio device in FL. This tells FL Studio that the Scala is the device that we want to use for audio input and output. Go to Options and Audio Settings. On a PC, please select Focusrite USB ASIO under ASIO Devices. On a Mac, select your Scala under Devices. Firstly, I'll show you how to make a shortcut inside FL, which will give you access to the samples folder that you just created. That way, whenever you add samples to this folder, you'll instantly be able to access them from inside FL. Come to View and make sure that you have the browser selected. 
Then select Options, File Settings, and under Browser Extra Search Folders, click on a folder and navigate to where you just created the Samples folder. Select the folder and press OK, and you can now exit the preferences. You'll now see the Samples folder in the browser on the left-hand side of FL. Click on the folder and you'll see all of the folders inside the pack, which you can open by clicking on them. You can also preview the samples by clicking on them. Now choose one of these four packs that you want to work with for now, because each of these packs contain loops at the same tempo and the same key to make them easy to work with. Once you've chosen one of these folders, you need to set the tempo of FL to match the tempo of the loops that you'll be using. You can see the tempo of the loops on every loop inside the pack. Right click on the tempo in the top bar and select type in value. Enter the tempo of the loops that you'll be using and then press enter. Now enter song mode by clicking just here. We also want to set the grid to allow you to keep the loops in time using snap. You can turn Snap on by clicking this magnet icon, and from this drop-down menu, select Beat. Now, when you drag loops into the playlist view, the loops will snap to a beat, which means that they'll be in time. As long as you have the pencil tool selected, which you can do just here, you can click to enter a new instance of that loop. You can right-click on a loop if you want to remove it. If you want to turn off Snap to move the loops off the grid, then come to the Snap menu and select None. I'm going to leave it on Beat to make it easier to keep things in time. You can now begin to add different types of loops like bass loops, melodies, percussion loops and the extra loops. To rename tracks, right click on the track header and select rename color icon and type in whatever you want to name the track. You can trim the loops by hovering over the end of the loops until you see this arrow. And you can click and drag the loop to shorten or extend it. To control the volume of each of these loops, double click on the track header and your volume control is just here. To add effects to these loops, we need to route them through the mixer. To do this, we need to tell each of these tracks which mixer channel to use. Double click on the first track and click and drag here to select track one. Repeat this for all of the tracks that you'll be using. Then when you hit play, you can see these level meters indicating that audio is coming through the mixer. The green dot on each track is the mute button. So you can turn that track on and off with a single click. By right clicking this mute button, you can solo this track, meaning that you mute every other track and you just hear what's coming through that track. This is helpful if you want to go through and rename these mixer channels to represent what's coming through each of these channels. Now to add effects like reverb and delay to these loops, Select the mixer channel of the sound that you want to add an effect to and in the slots on the right hand side, click on the arrow and go to select to pick an effect. For example, Fruity Reverb 2. This effect will now be added onto your track and you can turn it on and off using the mute button just here. 
You can also control how much the effect is being applied to the sound by clicking and dragging up and down on this dial. When the dial is fully white, the effect can be heard fully, and as you turn it down, you hear the effect less. Now feel free to experiment with the techniques that we've shown you in this video. And when you're ready to export so that you have an audio file of your track, press and hold control and highlight the length of your song by clicking and dragging in this top bar like so, so it turns red. Then go to File, Export, Wave File. Then name your file and select where you'd like the export to go to. Leave these settings as they are, unless you need to change them for any specific reason, and then select Start. You'll now find this audio file wherever you chose to export to. If you're using a PC and you listen back to your audio file, and it sounds significantly different to what you were hearing in FL Studio, then there are two things that you need to check. Firstly, make sure that you have the focus right set as the audio device for your computer, because using the PC's built-in sound card can have poor playback quality. Also, check that the media playing that you're using to listen back to the audio has no presets or enhancements selected. If you have an EQ, select flat, as this could be altering the playback quite significantly. You can now progress on from this video, and we'd love to know whether you're up and running with your new Scala. If you are, that's great, but if you still require some assistance, then we can direct you towards our support team.